Today we're going to be having a look at the Boogaboo B, currently in its fourth iteration, despite the fact that they call it the B5. But heck, I suppose if Apple can do it, so can everybody else. The B falls into what I like to think of as the luxury travel stroller class with regards to size and weight, though in a way I suppose this might lead some into thinking that it's not functional as a daily stroller, which wouldn't be true. Construction-wise, the B is actually sturdy enough for daily use. Though its ideal arena of use does have some limitations with regards both to the environment in which you intend to use it and the size of the child you plan to put in it. Let's start with a few stats. The B weighs just under 9 kilos, measuring 90 by 47 by 32 centimeters folded down, takes 4 kilos in the underslung shopping basket, and, as advertised, takes up to 17 kilos of child in the seat. But here's the thing with that, you see. My four-year-old is 17 kilos, and there's no way you're going to fit him comfortably in a seat this size, regardless of whether the stroller can take it weight-wise. And that brings us then to the first point regarding the limitations of this stroller. In my opinion, this stroller is only really relevant for a child between six months and about two and a half years. Really, two years is the optimal max, but we can say two in acknowledgement of the wide difference between children. Noting that, though, if both of you parents have big, beefy basketball player genes, you might want to avoid considering the stroller altogether. On the younger end, I rate this stroller as only ideal from six months because, as a travel-type stroller, the chassis is far from ideal for use with a bassinet. With a light frame, small wheels, and minimal suspension, this stroller, like all travel strollers, is apt to bounce your newborn around far more than is good for him, or on anything other than the smoothest shopping mall terrain. And additionally, the bassinet will position far lower to the ground than it would be on full-size strollers, which increases the effect of the terrain underfoot in addition to being further away from you and your ability to correct the many discomforts your baby will regularly want to make you aware of. Despite its age limitations, the B is actually quite comfortable to drive, again on smooth terrain, in comparison to a lot of other strollers of its class. As I said, there have been several generations at this point, so they've had a lot of time to work out the kinks regarding its suspension and swivel characteristics. But we'll talk about that more when we get into the mechanics. The B is also quite easy to fold up and down, and it has a sort of satisfying snap in the way this works. I don't know how else to quite say this, but pulling the handle and pressing your foot until it clicks feels good. And on the other end, it's equally cool when the footboard snaps into place when you're folding it flat. I'm not saying these are reasons for buying the stroller, but still, it's something. As far as most of the other mechanisms on the stroller are concerned, there is a definite difference in comfort between the chassis, which functions quite comfortably, and the seat, which is often frustrating and fiddly. Both adjusting the seat positions and removing or reversing the seat have a tendency to sort of gum up and get harder to operate over time, unless you've been really careful to regularly spray them down with some silicone. Speaking of maintenance, the textiles aren't all that easy to remove for a wash either. It's not the worst system, and it's gotten a bit better on the B5, but it'll take you at least twice the time of a chameleon, and will probably make your fingers sore as well if you're not well calloused like me. Okay, let's move on to the mechanics of this model, starting at the top. The handle and central fold on the Big Booby are quite well designed. It has a continuous handle running along the top, which avoids the need for any sort of plastic joints on either side, uh, which sometimes break on some of their other models. In addition, there's not a great deal of internal wiring inside that can go wrong, uh, and the handle adjustment mechanism works completely without wiring altogether. It is updated from the earliest model, as was several of their other types. Uh, they all sort of use the same system, all of Boogaboo's models for adjusting the handle. Uh, one thing with the B though, since when you extend the entire chassis, you have to pull on the handle and press with your foot down, it is important that you unlock the handle height regulation mechanism ahead of time when you're pulling the stroller into an upright position, as uh, otherwise you put uh, too much pressure on the uh, pads that actually lock the handle into various heights and you can damage these. The central locking mechanism is quite simple activated via these buttons here and pushes down together and uh, it's quite simple in its actual locking components. I've actually never seen any problems with this on any generation of the beat in relation to the actual central locking mechanism. It is however a good idea to lubricate that central locking mechanism from time to time as, as grit and um, dirt and so on build up within the mechanism, it can get a little bit harder to pull it up symmetrically on both sides and lock it into place. Okay, moving on to the seat unit and the connection points for the seat unit on the chassis. And the suit unit is about half of the stroller. And this is where I actually really start to dislike the B mechanically because the chassis is more or less fine for me. It's about the same sort of engineering as on a wide variety of other Boogaboo models. Um, 
other than, of course, the natural minuses of using a stroller of this size in relation to terrain and so on. Uh, but the seat is made up almost entirely of plastic, and it has very long, complex mechanisms. Uh, there's really nothing else in Boogaboo that has as large and complex plastic-based mechanisms as you find on the B. I mean, there's a lot of plastic in general and a lot of complex mechanisms on Boogaboo, but in this case, you have, for example, plastic elements that will control seat positioning that begin all the way at the top and run all the way the length down. You also have strange elements for locking the uh, uh, like lower part of the seat into various lengths and positions, uh, all, again, entirely made out of plastic. And in order to remove the seat, the system of folding it forwards, popping it out, and then fitting it in to the adapters here on either side, it all gets very, very fiddly over time. And in order to keep it functioning properly, not only do you have to make, uh, make sure that you follow all of the proper weight requirements and uh, don't use it on difficult terrain so you don't get looseness and instabilities in the chassis uh, that will lead to asymmetries, but you also need to make sure to uh, lubricate it very often with silicon spray. And again, it's very large plastic areas. It's not easy to access a lot of these areas for lubrication. So if there's one mechanical area of the B in general that I think is a real downside, and this is really true for all of the generations of the B, it is the seat unit. Simply because of the plastic and because it's all riveted together and it's all very complex mechanisms, it's very hard to fix or replace anything that goes wrong on the seat unit. And in most cases, Boogaboo will say, you broke it, you need to buy a new seat unit. So um, definitely be aware of the seat unit if you want to buy this stroller and uh, be careful with it. Okay, having a look at the lower back end of the stroller then, we can focus on the brake system and the suspension. So the suspension units are actually quite good on the B in comparison with other strollers of its size. It's still not a all-terrain stroller. You still need to drive on smooth terrain, but it does have decent suspension both in the back and the front wheels with this larger spring. It also has decent sized wheels in general for going over the kind of terrain you would need to go over in relatively smooth areas, urban and suburban areas. In relation to the brake system, System. I have seen a few problems with this. Uh, it activates by pushing it down here and it pushes these pins in between the pegs on the back side of the wheel. So there is a lot of plastic and springs uh, in a succession of tubing elements here between the brake pedal itself and the wheels. Sometimes you can have trouble with those. It is important to spray into that system and maintain it properly. More often you wind up with problems where uh, either rust or dirt and stuff builds up in the channels here and the pin does not uh, shoot directly into the wheel when you're activating the brakes. That's just a lubrication issue to fix it. In some cases, you actually can have situations where uh, because the brakes are not working in perfect order, the brake pin will start to rip off the teeth on the back side of the wheel, uh, and that can be a problem in which you might need to replace these wheels. Overall though, I would say the brake system and the suspension do not have particular problems though on the Boogaboo B. They're kind of a medium in their level of design. Okay, having a look at the front end of the stroller, we again see those large, thick suspension springs. It's not going to make the B an all-terrain stroller, but it does give it a little bit of an added uh, advantage versus other strollers of its class when driving on smoother urban and suburban terrain. Uh, in relation to swivel and the swivel functioning of the stroller, in some of the early iterations of the B, there was some trouble with the wobbly wheels that has since been mechanically adjusted for, both with the Boogaboo B3 and with the Boogaboo B5. If I take this wheel off, you'll notice that there is a suspension pad here in the center. This ring is spring-loaded and it presses up against the uh, housing mechanism uh, in order to hold the wheel in place more sturdily and prevent any sort of a wobbling issue from occurring. The lock for the swivel function is also this large white unit, which is a very solid system, so you're not going to have trouble with that uh, swivel locking unit wearing down and not being able to lock the wheels in a directly in line position. Okay, just a last note on wheels themselves in relation to the Boogaboo B. Uh, Boogaboo in general is really good with all their wheels. They put a lot of extra uh, effort into making their wheels good on all of their models. So uh, the wheels themselves again are a little bit larger than a lot of the wheels of its class. They're six inch wheels. 
Uh, they have one of these typical nice designs from Boogaboo, which is a raised ridge on the center of the tire. Uh, that makes for a smoother drive. It makes for a smoother swivel in the front. Uh, and it also protects the tires from wearing down quite as fast because that ridge will wear down before it even gets to the rest of the tire. Everything else is quite a sturdy construction. Of course, has decent ball bearings and all of that. Despite a succession of evolutions, the B is sort of an oddball in the stroller world with regards to size and weight. In fact, I would hypothesize that if it hadn't become nearly as iconic as the Chameleon, it would be off the market by now. The original B was launched in the years preceding the Baby Zen Revolution, where it acted as a welcome modern competitor to McLaren strollers. At this point though, since it is too large to count as cabin luggage, yet too small to take your child all the way through his or her stroller days, the B has been relegated to a pretty limited arena of use. If you still want one though, despite these limitations, and the roughly $1,000 price tag, then I would say that the B is ideal for people who do not rely too heavily on their stroller and thus want the benefit of its smaller size, who live in urban or suburban smooth paved environments, and who use their cars daily. While I wouldn't recommend the bassinet, a car seat and adapters is a good fit for the B and goes along with the car driving minimal use theme. If you get one, be sure not to overburden it and familiarize yourself with the instruction manual and weight limitations especially with regards to the seat, and lubricate the mechanisms with silicone spray on a regular basis. While there are many other strollers I prefer, including in this size weight class, I do understand that for some people, boogaboo strollers are a style thing, and I suppose I can respect that. In any case, this has been a review of the Boogaboo B. We hope that you found this video interesting, and if you did, please subscribe, as it helps us to continue making videos in the future. Thank you.